I'm going to show you how to create your own custom captions for Adobe Captivate using Photoshop. So first off, let's take a look at the text caption and its properties, and then we'll go ahead and design some graphics inside of Photoshop. Up here at the insert bar, I'm going to select text and create a new text caption. So for this text caption, you'll see that we have a few different properties available here in the properties panel. One of those properties is the caption type. If I open up the drop down menu, you'll see there's a lot of different designs available that come prepackaged out of the box for Adobe Captivate. Some will work, some will be, some of these will be perfect for your designs and some of them will not. And so we can customize these using Photoshop and bring in those graphics and have custom captions. You'll see as I select one of these caption types, you'll see that we have five different directions for this specific style that we can update our bubble. Some will have callouts and some of them will have different color pop-ups. So depending on the caption you select, we'll have different graphics. Before we design this in Photoshop, let's take a look at what we have. Before we design this in Photoshop, let's take a look at the different graphics that we have to generate. Over here to the right, we'll click on the folder icon, and it'll take us right to our application files for Adobe Captivate. You'll notice that we have five different images for each caption. And so this will give us the different directions or styles when we apply this caption type to our text caption. Also, you'll notice that they're in bitmap format. So not JPEGs or PNGs, but bitmaps. So inside Photoshop, we need to generate these five graphics as a bitmap and then import them into Captivate. Before we do that though, another important piece of information about Captivate with captions is that we need to design the graphic to the smallest size that we want our captions to be. So what that means is if I scale this down, at a certain point, this caption will go no further right there, and height-wise right there. So whatever size graphic we're going to generate in Photoshop, we need to make sure that's going to be the smallest that we want our caption to be. Now, of course, this caption bubble is really small. I probably don't want it to be that tiny, but I need to make sure that I don't generate a graphic that's huge. If it's too big, I can't go any smaller than that, and it's going to look kind of off, right? It's going to look bad. So right now we're going to go ahead and generate a graphic that's probably about 100 pixels by 50 pixels in height, and I think that will work just fine. So let's go jump into Photoshop and design that graphic. Okay, so right here in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new document. And for the document type, I'm going to choose Web. So Captivate, when we generate our projects, the intent is, going to, the intent is to put them online so that our learners can view them via the internets, right? So it's going to be a web graphic based off of pixels for width and height as well as a 72 resolution for the graphic uh, DPI. So right here we're going to choose... So let's go ahead and type in 100 by 50 for our width and height for this graphic. Everything else will be fine. We'll click Create. And there we go. There is our artboard, so we can start designing our first caption. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this and press the Command key and the plus sign. For Windows, it's Control plus. And here we go. So as we design this caption bubble, a couple things we need to go ahead and make sure that we do. One, we need to have a solid background color that Captivate will make transparent as we import this bubble. And then two, we need to make sure that there's no detailed artwork in the center portion of the design. Because if it is, uh, you know, what Captivate does is it actually stretches or tiles the center portion vertically and horizontally of the graphic. And so that's how they scale it. So if I had a design here, like an icon or some type of some graphical element, it'll get stretched and repeated. It just looks really bad. So, so don't do that, right? But we can have a lot of detail here in the corners, and that's just fine. So the direction of the speaking bubble, right, rounded corners, whatever we like, uh, that's fine. So first off, let's address the background here by filling in with a color. 
So over here in my layers panel, I'm going to rename layer one to BG for background. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a background color. Uh, this color should follow your design. If you have a dark design for Captivate, we want to make sure that it's a dark background color. If it's a light design, we want to make sure it's a light color background. Also, it should be the same roughly color of your border for the caption. So if you use an orange, like a dark orange, you want to make sure it's a light orange. If it's a dark blue, we want to make sure it's a light blue for the background. Anyways, I'm going to go for a blue design here. Uh, we're going to have a dark blue border, so I need to have a light blue background. I'm going to go to my edit menu here and select fill. And we're going to go ahead and choose a fill color. And I already went ahead and added some colors to work with. So over here in my swatches, I want to select this light blue color and just make it a tad bit lighter. That's pretty good. I'm going to click OK. OK again. Excellent. So the design I want to use is very simple. It's going to be a white box with a dark blue border. Right? We don't have to get fancy with it. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and generate the different speaking bubble directions. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and use my vector tools here inside of Photoshop. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle. It doesn't have to be the entire size of the artboard. Actually, we don't want it to be. We want to have a little bit of padding on the edges. Over here in the properties, we want to go ahead and apply the width and height, fill color, stroke color, basically modify the look of this box uh, with these properties here. So for the fill color, again, very simple. Uh, solid color, I'm going to choose white. That's nice. For the stroke color, I'm going to go ahead and apply a dark color. We'll choose that one. It's actually here at the bottom of the swatches. Okay. All right, one pixel is good enough for me. Let's add a little bit of radius. Let's try three pixel radius. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and select my move tool here, and there's my new caption. Very simple white fill, blue stroke, life is good. Now, like I said before, we need to have five different images, right? So if I want to have different pop up graphics, I could do that. If I want to have different call out directions, I could do that as well. Essentially, I want to go ahead and generate the different graphics that Captivate will use so I can switch it up in the properties panel. So over here in my layers, I'm going to go ahead and label this artboard to cool blue one. So that's going to be the name of my caption here. Double click on artboard one, cool blue one. That's the first graphic. Enter to accept. I'm going to right click on this. Let's go ahead and be a little lazy here and duplicate this artboard. Okay, the name of this artboard is going to be Cool Blue 2. I'm going to click OK. And there's our second graphic. I want to go ahead and customize this a little bit. I'm going to select the rectangle here in the layers panel. And I want to go ahead and create an you know, a call out bubble, right? A little triangle at the bottom that shows the direction that this caption is appearing or pointing to. So to do that, again, I'm going to use my vector tools. So over here in our tools palette, I'm going to select the white direct select tool. I'm going to select the bottom pixels. I'm going to select the bottom anchor points here. And I'm going to go ahead and use my direction arrows to move them up. So with my up arrow, move them up a few pixels. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my pen tool, the add anchor point tool to add some anchor points to my graphic. So one, two, and three. With my direct select tool, I'm going to grab the center of the three. I think that's it. You are. And pull this down. Now, by default, it added these handles to it. I think it looks really bad. So what I'm going to do here is, again, grab my pen tool. But this time, I'm going to select the Convert Point tool and remove these handles by simply clicking on these anchor points. There we go. There we go. And there we go. So now I have some straight line segments for this caption bubble. I'm going to adjust this a few more 
There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. So it looks pretty good. So this will be the bottom right direction for the bubble. I'm going to go ahead and do this real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and create the other three graphics. So again, I'm going to right click on the artboard. I'm going to duplicate the artboard. I'm going to go ahead and call this Cool Blue 3. Click OK. I'm going to go ahead and flip this. So with my Move tool, I'm going to select this layer. And then I'm going to use my Transform properties to flip it horizontally. To do that, through your Edit menu, I'm going to select Transform and Flip Horizontally. All right, so there we go. There's the bottom left caption bubble. We need to do two more. So real quick, duplicate the artboard. Cool blue four. I'm going to select the rectangle and then again flip it vertically this time. So through your edit menu, transform, flip vertically. Excellent. Duplicate. And finally the fifth graphic. Edit. Missed it. Got to select the graphic first. And now we can go ahead and flip it. Edit. Transform. Flip horizontally. So if I zoom out here, using the Command minus, Control minus for Windows, you can see here that these are the graphics for my caption bubble. The plain caption, the bottom right, bottom left, top left, top right. Okay, excellent. So what I need to do now is export these graphics out as bitmaps so I can import them into Captivate. So really cool here, since we're working with artboards, we do have an option to export as. This is a really great web option when we need to go ahead and export all our graphics, right? Designing a website, you want to go ahead and output the logo and the buttons and all that. Fantastic. But again, we are not using JPEGs or PNGs. And so this bitmap format is not necessarily a web graphic. And so if I go to my file menu and export as, again, this will only allow us to export as a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, or even an SVG. So those are None of those graphics are going to help me out. So another cool option here that we have inside of Photoshop is to export this artboards to files. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So each one of these artboards can become a TIFF, a bitmap, any other image format that's supported here inside of Photoshop. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and export artboards to files. And I get this little tiny wizard to go through. So of course I need to go ahead and give them a destination, right? A folder to export to. I can add a prefix if I wanted to. It's going to use the artboard name, so I can leave that alone, right? Cool blue one, cool blue two. I want to do the artboard contents only. So if I had a graphic hanging out here in the pasteboard area, I don't want that to be included. So that's very important to only have the artboard contents selected. Right here in the file types, I can choose my formats. Look at that. Targas, PSDs, PDFs. I can choose any of those formats here within this drop down menu. If I select one of these options, I'll have some image properties here at the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit browse. Let's actually put this to the desktop. I'll create a new folder called captions. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and delete this prefix. I don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and choose bitmap here. 24 is pretty good. Uh, these other options don't really need. And then I'm going to go ahead and run. So what's going to do, it's going to output each one of these graphics as a bitmap to that folder. Uh, let's go ahead and check it out here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my finder and jump to the desktop, select my captions, and there we go. Check that out. I have each caption now exported outside as bitmaps. That's pretty awesome. Now there's an additional step here that I'm going to go ahead and skip. Uh, there is a, a file, it's called, a, it's called an FCM file, that allows you to define the margins within these captions. Basically what I mean by that is the text should not start at the top leftmost part of this caption. It should actually be brought in just maybe 10 pixels from the left and maybe 20 pixels from the top. And so that the text will always, you know, 
generate within the caption. I would have to create an FCM file for each one of these. Uh, we'll save that for another uh, tip here for another day. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in these captions into Captivate and take a look at that style. Here we go. We're inside of Captivate now. I'm going to select this text caption and apply my new cool blue 12345 design to this bubble. So over here in our properties panel, I'm going to go ahead and hit the folder icon. And I'm going to I'm going to jump to my desktop here. And I'm going to go ahead and select the uh, captions folder and select either one of these graphics. It doesn't matter which one you select. Open. And there we go. There's our new cool blue caption over here in the bottom of the callouts. You'll see those are the different directions that I can apply to this bubble. You can see here for the top left, the text kind of overlaps. And again, that's why you generate an FCM file. It's just captivates kind of just uh, instructions, if you will, to push the text to a certain spot. But we could do this manually here inside of Captivate as well. I can do a left margin. Uh, maybe go ahead and bring this in a little bit by 3, and then from the top, maybe 15. So it's a manual process. Again, with that other document, it'll do it automatically for each caption style or direction. Good. So there you go. We got some beautiful captions that we have brought in from Photoshop into Captivate. One last thing, though. What if I made a mistake and I want to go ahead and adjust the design? What I'll have to do is export them again inside of Photoshop and then re-import it into Captivate. But I need to make sure I delete this first before I re-import it. So check this out. I'm going to select this caption. I'm going to go ahead and select Adobe Blue. Then I'm going to hit the trash can icon. I'm going to go ahead and delete the cool blue caption that I created out of Photoshop. So by deleting it and then re-importing the updated graphics, that's how you'll update your caption bubbles inside of Captivate. So again, we have to delete the style that we created, re-import it, and then apply it, and then our captions will be updated inside of Captivate. So there you go. Uh, not necessarily a quick tip, but a tip to create custom captions from Photoshop for Captivate.